Hello everyone. Today we will talk about the electronic components we need to test the program created in our previous tutorial. Before we continue, click on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. The first of these components are the PIC16F628A microcontroller and the Arduino Nano, which we already talked about in our previous tutorial. Three light emitting diodes, also commonly called LEDs of any color will be connected as output to the microcontroller. They are represented by this symbol. It has two connection pins. One of the pins is longer than the other one. The longer pin is called the anode. It connects to the positive of your power supply. The shorter pin is called the cathode and it connects to the negative of your power supply. The shorter pin on the side of the flat edge of the LED indicates the cathode of the LED. The LED will light up only when the anode connects to the positive of a power source and the cathode connects to its negative. This diode has a value of 1N4148. Here is its symbol. It works just like the LED. It allows the flow of current only in one direction from the anode to the cathode but does not give off light. It also reduces the voltage across it by about 0.7 volts which make it suitable for our use. Most microcontrollers need about 5 volts to function. The diode will be connected between the battery and the positive pin of the microcontroller, thus reducing its voltage from 6 volts to 5.3 volts. The black band around the diode is to identify its cathode. A 20 MHz crystal oscillator is used to complete the internal clock circuit for the microcontroller. Its unique nature allows it to vibrate and continuously produce an electrical signal at a predetermined frequency. Here is the symbol of a crystal oscillator. The frequency of a crystal oscillator is printed on it. The crystal oscillator pins have no polarity. Two picofarad ceramic capacitors along with the 20 MHz crystal oscillator completes the internal clock circuit for the microcontroller. Shown is the symbol of a ceramic capacitor. The ceramic capacitor momentarily stores electrical signals. Like the crystal oscillator, it does not have any specially marked pin and its value is also printed on it. The ceramic capacitor number table helps you to determine its value. Note down the first two numbers, then the third number will account for the numbers of trailing zeros. With the example of 103, the capacitor value is 10,000 picofarad. The underlined number indicates 50 slash 100 voltage tolerance of the ceramic capacitor. Two 10 kilo ohms resistors will be connected with two push button switches to the input output pins of our microcontroller. A resistor, as the name implies, reduces the amount of electrical current that flows through it. The value of the resistor determines the amount of electrical current it allows through it. Either of these are the symbols of a resistor. Its value is deduced from the color bands around it. In this case, brown, black, orange, gold is 10 kilo ohms. Three 330 ohms resistors will be connected in series with our LEDs. Their color bounds are orange, orange, brown, gold, giving the value of 330 ohms. Simply write out the number that corresponds with the first two color bounds on the resistor. Then write the number of zeros that corresponds with the third color band. The fourth band gives the tolerance of the resistor. The value of 4700 ohms with a tolerance of plus minus 5% is gotten in this example. This means the resistor value could be between 4465 and 4935 ohms. Two push button switches will be connected as inputs to the microcontroller. These are just two open contacts that allows the flow of current when pushed. Here is the symbol of a push button switch. The circuit connections will be done on a breadboard. The type we are using for our testing as shown have several O's with markings of alphabet, numbers, and lines with plus and minus signs. 
electronic components are inserted into the holes to make internal electrical connections. The horizontal lines at the top and at the bottom of the breadboard, marked as positive and negative, are electrically connected. This means current can flow through from one component to another if they are pushed into any hole along the line. On the other hand, electrical connections are made vertically on any hole between point A to E and F to J. This will be practically demonstrated in our next tutorial. A 6 volt battery power supply will be used to power our circuit connections. The battery casing will contain 4 AA batteries, each of 1.5 volts, making it 6 volts. The red wire is the positive of the power supply, while the black wire is its negative. This is the symbol that shows a battery connection in a circuit diagram. The compile code in our previous tutorial will be downloaded into the PIC16F628A microcontroller with the PICKIT3 programmer. This low-cost programmer will connect to your computer with a USB cable and to the breadboard with a 6-pin cable. Each pin on the cable is numbered from 1 to 6, where pin 1 is marked with an arrow. Each pin has specific functions as shown. These pins will be connected to assigned pins of the microcontroller. Pin 1 of the PIC kit 3 will connect to pin 4 of the microcontroller. Pin 2 to pin 14. Pin 3 to pin 5. Pin 4 to pin 13. Pin 5 to pin 12. And finally, pin 6 to pin 10. Some jumper wires will definitely be used to make electrical connections across several points in the breadboard, particularly over other electronic components. In our next tutorial, we will use these components to build our test circuits on a breadboard and first program the PIC16F628 microcontroller and then the Arduino Nano. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button. See you in our next tutorial.